Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. This is Lecture 1.3, Portability and Scalability in Heterogeneous Parallel Pro Pro Computing. The objective of this lecture is to help you to understand the importance and nature of scalability and portability in parallel programming. This slide shows that, uh, a, a data that was published by IBM in 2010. And uh, this uh, graph shows that um, the uh, hardware costs and software costs have been both growing uh, exponentially uh, over the years. And this is a log plot. So a linear uh, uh, curve in this plot is an exponential curve. And um, uh, the software cost is measured by lines per chip. And uh, it has been growing by two times every 10 months. And the hardware cost is measured by gates per chip. And this is, uh, uh, measure, uh, has been increasing by two times every 18 months. That, um, therefore, the software cost has been growing much faster than the hardware cost. So even though the software cost started to be lower than hardware, but um, uh, at this point, in, uh, after 2010, the software cost has uh, essentially exceeded the hardware cost. And it has been growing faster. So um, the software cost is going to be much, much more than hardware cost in the years to come. So in the future, all the systems need to be uh, able to minimize software development cost or redevelopment cost. And this leads to the consideration of scalability and, perform uh, and portability. The first aspect of software cost control is scalability. If we develop an application to run well on core A, what we'd like to do is we'd like to make sure that um, the same application without significant re, uh, redevelopment can run efficiently on the next version of core A, let's say core A 2.0. So um, this allows us to, uh, to use the same application when a new generation of hardware is introduced. And um, uh, when, when, whenever scalability holds, then the uh, developer does not need to re-revise the hot, uh, software in order to run well on a new generation of software, therefore reducing the redevelopment cost. There's another dimension of scalability. Whenever an application runs well on one uh, core A, we will also like it to, uh, to run well on multiples of these core A's or more of the same cores. And this allows us to, uh, to to add performance by adding more hardware into the system. Uh, many, uh, in many situations, the vendors would like to introduce uh, multiple versions of hardware, and each version will have um, increasingly more amount of hardware available to the users. So uh, if we can develop a piece of software that is scalable uh, to run well on more of the same cores, then this gives the vendor the, uh, the scalability of their hardware so that when they introduce more hardware, uh, the users can actually observe increased performance from the application. In the future, we expect that uh, there will be several generations of hardware uh, uh, where performance will be increased by adjusting many of these parameters. For example, the number of compute units or the number of cores and the, the number of threads the number, uh, the increasing vector length, the increased, uh, uh, increased pipeline depth, and increased DRAM burst size, increased the number of DRAM channels, and the increasing D, uh, data movement latency. All these hardware parameters will, uh, can significantly affect the uh, performance of the application. And oftentimes, applications need to be able to, uh, to be tuned choose um, some settings of these parameters. So, but um, the programming style that we use in this uh, course address these uh, needs by supporting uh, fine-grained problem decomposition and dynamic threat scheduling. So that um, the application that you write according to this programming style will be able to automatically adjust to a fairly wide range of uh, parameter values that the, um, the hardware vendors may change. So this allows your application to, um, to run well on one generation of hardware and continue to run well 
on a future generation of hardware. And also, uh, if your application runs well on one of, of the cores, you can expect the application to also run well on more of the same cores. The second dimension of software cost control is portability. Portability uh, is defined as um, if we develop an application to run well on core A, we would also like it to be able to run well on different types of cores, in this case, core B and core C in the picture. So uh, oftentimes, the, uh, ap the application uh, developed for core A may be uh, initially running on one vendor uh, product. And, um, but if the uh, application is uh, portable, then the users can expect to run the same application on different hardware types, oftentimes from different hardware vendors, to also run well. So uh, these, this can also uh, decrease the software uh, cost because um, the developer will not need to redevelop or revise their application so that the uh, application can run well on other types of vendor systems. And um, a lot of times uh, we will see different design styles from different vendors. Uh, now for GPUs, oftentimes we will see um, very significant de design styles as illustrated in this picture. And um, uh, in, in terms of the uh, particular kinds of differences, we can expect to see that uh, for the CPU cores, uh, we, can, uh, we will uh, see different uh, instruction set architectures such as x86 versus ARM versus other types of uh, instruction set architectures. And um, these instruction set architectures oftentimes would uh, require different compiler uh, code generation and so on. So um, and that, that oftentimes uh, will affect the portability of your application. And uh, we also have different uh, design styles, even based on the same instruction set architecture. We could have latency-oriented CPU designs versus throughput-oriented GPU designs. And um, so uh, when we de develop a, uh, a piece of uh, code, can we expect to run, uh, it, can we expect it to run well on a uh, uh, latency-oriented CPU if it runs well on a or, uh, throughput-oriented GPU? And the th uh, third uh, kind of dimension of portability often comes with different styles of parallelism uh, in the uh, processor core. Um, there's a design style called VRW, and there's a design style SIMD, and there's a design style multi-threading. So uh, we're going to actually uh, touch uh, quite a bit of that uh, uh, this level of differences for uh, hardware. And then um, uh, it also will come to how we organize DRAMs in the system, whether it's a shared memory model or distributed memory model. So um, these, uh, all these dimensions um, will affect the portability of your application. So um, when, uh, when we work towards the end of the course, we will have, uh, in, we'll introduce emerging standards such as OpenCL and heterogeneous system architecture that will help to address the portability of your applications. So at this point, we have completed all the, uh, the high-level introduction and context information lectures. So starting from next lecture, uh, we're going to be introducing the CUDA programming interface and begin to, uh, to uh, help you to uh, develop your uh, lab uh, application assignments. So uh, for those of you who would like to um, learn more about the uh, topic, and the context information, I would like to encourage you to read chapter one of the textbook. Thank you.